Hello, we're back with this topic that seems quite appreciated on my channel. And I'm talking about the i3WM desktop customization. And many of you have asked if I could make a video on how to achieve my i3 gaps configuration. And I'm going to try and show you how things are done, but I have to say, I cannot teach you everything. I mean, if you really want to understand what's going on under the hood, what makes the system and the desktop environment behave in a specific way, you should really read the documentation, read the Arch Wiki, read the i3 and Polybar documentation, at least the parts you are interested in, the ones that explain the things you want to achieve. Uh, you should also consider that your hardware will most likely be different. Uh, but that said, today I will show you what I do to build my very own desktop environment, and I'm going to give you a general idea uh, of what are the required steps, what are the configuration files that you need, and what they do. So, let's get started. I'm of course inside of an Arch Linux virtual machine. You can do most of this stuff on any distribution of your choice, but this first part will be different, of course. Uh, so, let's say you've just installed Arch, uh, your network video drivers, your X server, and by the way, i3 doesn't run on Wayland, there's a fork project for that that's called Sway, and you've also installed your display manager if you use one, and my choice is usually LightDM. You'll now need to install i3 gaps, uh, URXVT, which actually is called RXVT Unicode, and I also usually install Firefox at this point, so if I have to look up for something online, I can do that. And I also install Fair so that I can set a wallpaper. Now, after i3 gaps is installed, you will need to start your display manager. Just start it, don't enable the service yet, and i3 will launch after logging in. Uh, the first thing you will be asked is if you want to create a config file and what key you want to become your mod key. I always go with the win key, uh, meta, super, call it whatever you want, and confirm. Now, after creating the A3 configuration file, you will notice that you can do basically nothing. Uh, and this is because we haven't set a proper terminal command in the configuration file. Now, what I usually do at this stage in order not to install additional unwanted stuff is just reboot the machine. Uh, and if you use a display manager, you don't want it to be enabled as a service at the moment. So after rebooting, you will basically have your console running again, and from here, you can edit your i3 config file as set a proper terminal emulator. So let me take a minute to explain what's going on here. The i3 config file is very easy to understand. On the top, you usually have your mod key, uh, font, and other general settings. Then you'll have a list of comments you may want to run when the window manager starts. And here I usually put my polybar, Compton, and my fair comment to set my wallpaper. We can actually set the wallpaper right now. I have a simple file in my home directory. And after that, you'll have a list of key bindings that start with bind key. Uh, and you can assign pretty much any key combination to any command. Now, those commands are specific i3 commands, but if you want to run a program or a script, you usually do that with the exec command, and the no startup ID flag disables the startup notifications for this specific exec command, and more of that on the i3 documentation. Now, let's just set your XVT as our terminal, and what I'm doing here is I'm telling i3 that whenever I press the mode plus enter key combination, I want it to run your XVT. So save that, uh, you can now enable and start your display manager service, log in, and you'll have i3 ready to go. Okay, now the next thing we may want to do is install AUR support. I use Yaourt to manage AUR, so let's just open up our terminal and edit the pacman config file and add the Arch Linux FR repository. After that, we can install Yaourt. And with Yaourt installed, we can now install Polybar, which is my status bar of choice. As you can see, I don't use i3 status, I didn't even install it. Uh, another thing we need is Donst, uh, which is our notification service, and also Rofi, which will be our menu system. Uh, and at this point, I also install Pulse Audio, uh, which you actually need if you use Firefox and you want audio from the browser. 
And this part is very well documented on Arch Wiki. So if you're on Arch, go ahead and read the wiki uh, or read the, the documentation of your distribution of choice. Uh, the last thing we need is our compositor. And I use Compton for that. I usually leave it with the default settings. I think I've just changed the fade, delta, and speed. So I've actually edited the default configuration file in the ATC folder instead of copying it in my home directory. Uh, and we want this stuff to be running on startup, so we just need to add them in our i3 config file. I used to install a couple of fonts at this point that I used in my configuration files, so I installed Inconsolata, Roboto, and Fontosome. And I also want to walk you through the Polybar config file very quickly because everything is explained on the Polybar GitHub page. Uh, and you basically have a general section where you can set your colors as variables uh, and then you can configure as many bars as you want in this file with specific settings for each bar and after that you can start coding your modules and this also allows you to use the same module on multiple bars if you want. Another configuration file I need to mention is the Dunst config file, which contains the settings for our notifications. So fonts, colors, and other notification settings go in here. Lastly, how do we configure URXVT, which actually looks terrible by default, and Rofi? Well, they refer to your .xdefaults and .txt resources files located in your home folder. And I use them both so that I can keep the raw fee and the UXVT configurations separated. And as shown in my previous video, I also have some script that allow raw fee and polybar to do additional stuff. And I even have kind of an Easter egg. I have this shortcut in my i3 config file, uh, which runs a script that allows you to empty the trash with mod plus shift plus backspace, much like on Mac OS X. Uh, and it also plays a sound to alert you. You'll need the Alsa Utils package for the sound to be played, by the way. But it works nice. Now, all of my configuration files and scripts, a list of ones that are not specific to my hardware, will be available in the description. I think I will make an archive you can download, and you will just need to copy the files in your home folder. But make sure you read them first, because they will have important comments that will tell you what a specific line or a specific comment does. So again, you can understand what's going on. And also, if you need to edit something, it will be commented. Okay, I think that's basically it for today. I hope you now have a general idea, at least about what you need to look up in the documentation to understand what you want to do and how to achieve your specific needs. Uh, again, it's not something standard that you can copy and paste and everything will work instantly. Uh, you'll need to tinker a little bit, even if you want to adapt someone else's configuration files for your needs. So again, look up online, read my config files or anybody else's ones. Uh, that's basically how I learned all of this stuff and still learn other interesting things. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you found this video interesting. And I will see you very soon. Bye.